So today I'm talking about a Toyota with the P0171 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. So what is a Toyota P0171 code? Well, it's a fuel trim system two lean bank one. And what does this mean? Well, basically the onboard computer sees too much air going into the engine and not enough gas. So it's got the wrong air fuel ratio mixture. And it's seeing this on bank one and bank one is always the side of the engine with the number one cylinder. So if you find the number one cylinder, that's gonna be the side of the engine that's having the problems. And this code can be problematic sometimes since it can be caused by so many different things but I'm going to show you how you could troubleshoot it and you can narrow down what it is and solve the problem and some of the possible causes of this well it could be a bad mass airflow sensor it could be a clogged fuel filter it could be a the fuel pressure regulator a fuel pump a vacuum leak an oxygen sensor and possibly a, a bad injector and many people automatically jump to the O2 sensor since this is what triggers it and sends the code to the computer but that's not necessarily what the problem is and while it could be a bad bank one upstream oxygen sensor it's not the only thing that can cause is code the upstream oxygen sensor is reading what the air gas fuel ratio is and reporting it back to the computer so something else could be causing this and so the first thing to do when you get this code is go check out the, the mass airflow sensor called the MAF sensor it'll be located right at the air intake box this is reporting to the onboard computer how much oxygen is going into the engine so if anything goes wrong with this then it can cause issues quite often they just need to be cleaned up there's some stuff called mass airflow sensor cleaner and they can be cleaned up and often they'll start working again if they have failed you, there's different ways you go about troubleshooting if this is bad one way i do it is i use a obd2 scan tool and anyone would work any low cost one would work just go to live data go down find the mass airflow sensor and with the engine off you have to have the key in the on position but with the engine off it shouldn't be reading any high numbers since there's no air flowing past it if there is with the engine off then you know there's a problem with it you can also start the engine and reference the numbers also if, if you can find the specification on your particular toyota but the first thing to go and check is going to be the mass airflow sensor and so if you test out the map sensor and that test good then the next thing to go and check is going to be the fuel delivery and this is going to be two main components the fuel pump and the fuel filter a lot of toyotas will have the fuel filter inside the fuel pump but sometimes they could be separate sometimes they'll be up and underneath the vehicle it's really going to vary but these will be the next two things to check a quick way to check this is to check the fuel pressure at the fuel rail toyotas don't make this really easy to do but you can do it if you want to you can rent these kits at an automotive store that hook up to it I'm going to do a video on how you could test the pressure on a Toyota and I'll put the link in the description below if you want to check that out but if you could do a pressure test on it that would just be a quick way to rule out a fuel problem because if the engine specifications to say 50 psi and you hook up a gauge and that's what you're getting then you know the fuel pump's good you know that's not a clogged fuel filter or nothing's going on there you know that's all good so you could rule that out so if you can't do a fuel pressure test that's going to rule out the fuel pump because it might be weak it might be failing if the fuel filter is easy to get to, then it'd be a good idea to swap it out since it's part of regular maintenance. But if it is inside the gas tank, then you might want to skip on to another thing. But keep in mind, fuel pressure can cause this problem, especially if the fuel pump's weak or failing, or if you've got a clogged fuel filter. And then the next thing that could cause this is going to be a vacuum leak. And a vacuum leak can be problematic sometimes to find. One way that mechanics will go around and try to find a vacuum leak is they'll use like a flammable liquid. They'll start the vehicle and then they'll go around wherever they think the vacuum leak is. They'll spray and if the idle goes up, then they'll know they found the leak. Another method is to use the smoke machine method, which is the method I like to use. It's basically you just take a smoke machine, you, you feed smoke into the intake manifold and wherever the smoke comes out, there's a leak. You can get low cost smoke machines on Amazon for like $50, $60. You can also make them up yourself. There's a lot of YouTube videos on how you can make one yourself for like five, ten dollars But like I said, that's not the only way to find a vacuum leak. There's different ways you can go about doing it. But however you do it, the next thing to go and look for is going to be a vacuum leak. And so if you check that out and that all looks good, then the next thing is to go check out that Bank One Sensor One upstream oxygen sensor. Since it might have just failed and begin bad data back to the onboard computer. The location on these can vary. It's really going to depend on the year of the Toyota and the engine type as to where it's located. Here's an example of a 2007 Camry 3.5 liter V6. And as you can see, Bank One Sensor One is right here. It'll be before the catalytic converter and it'll be called the upstream Bank One Sensor One oxygen sensor. So the next thing to do would be to go check that out. And you can't test these if you want to. There's some good YouTube videos on that if you want to test it out or you can go ahead and replace it. But the next thing to go and check would be that Bank One upstream oxygen sensor and so if you check out all those things and it still can't get this code to clear or it comes back then very likely you got a bad injector 
or injectors going on on that bank one. Again, there's different ways you go about troubleshooting if you got a bad injector. Some mechanics will swap out one at a time with no good ones to see if the problem clears. But there's many other methods. There's some good YouTube videos on how you go about checking out fuel injectors to see if they failed. But the next thing to go and check would be to see if you had a failed fuel injector. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give an overview of how you go about fixing a Toyota with the P0171 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.